Hi, it's David here from Clear Choice Water Filters. I'm going to show you how a under sink reverse osmosis system works. And I'm also going to answer some of the most frequently asked questions that we get from our customers. In the next five to ten minutes, hopefully you're going to learn a little bit about the process and how exactly your under sink system is working. What we have here is our four stage USA reverse osmosis system. I've removed the top filter which is the post filter or the last filter in line which is the carbon filter just to make it a bit easier for you to see all the workings of the system. This is the tank. The tank's purpose is to store the water as the reverse osmosis system is quite slow. As you can see what I've set up is a tap that would be in the corner of your sink and I've also set up a pressure gauge so you can see when the system pressure is reading. At the minute it's reading zero, the tanks turned off. This is the way that the reverse osmosis system will be at most times because the tank will be full and the automatic shutoff valve here will be sensing that this tank is full and it won't be letting the water through. First thing I want to show you is the water in. So it's this red tube. This is the water coming in from underneath your sink. So this will be hooked up to the cold water connection under your sink. And you should have something like that, which is the pressure limiting valve, which stops the system getting any pressure spikes, which may crack the housings. So this system is actually turned on. The water's pressurizing it. So it goes through here and it goes through the first stage sediment filter which is here. Um, it just takes out dust, dirt, rust and sediment before it goes to the second filter which is your carbon filter. So this filter protects the next one which is the carbon filter from blocking. The carbon filter will take out chlorine before it goes into the membrane because the membrane itself is prone to attack from chlorine so it's important that this cartridge is changed regularly. So it comes out of your second stage which is the carbon. It comes along here and it goes into what we call an automatic shut off valve. And this has four ports so it goes into the first port here and then it comes straight out of there and it goes into the membrane housing and inside this housing is the membrane which does all the heavy filtration. It takes out fluoride, pesticides, herbicides, um, every, anything that you can think of that's not pure water. So inside here it's a membrane. So you think about it like a brick wall and only water can go through there. So what happens is when it comes along goes in the membrane only water can get through and anything that's not water gets sent to drain down this black line. So, so far we've got the red line in through the automatic shutoff valve into the membrane and then out to drain through this black tube. And this will generally be hooked up to your uh, drain which is under your sink by means of a clamp. The other thing we've got coming out of course is your pure water. So it comes out through this port and it goes through a non-return valve. Sometimes a non-return valve can be built into the actual elbow here. In this case this is a external you can see the non-return valve so all that does is it stops the water back flowing into the membrane. If this non-return valve doesn't work you're going to have problems with your system same as the automatic shut off valve so these two things are very important to make your system work properly. This white tube then comes out it's the last part of the system coming out of the automatic shut off valve and it goes directly to the reverse osmosis tank and as you can see the tank is directly connected to the water filter tap that's on your sink. Okay, now in between here, usually clipped onto the top, there'll be your post carbon filter. So as it comes out of the tank, it will go through another carbon filter which will make the water sweeter in taste and more palatable before it actually goes into the tap. So to start it up, this pressure gauge sitting at zero. As soon as I open the tank, tank will begin to fill with water and you can see straight away your pressure gauge 
has went from 0 to about 50 psi and that is very important part of the system also if your pressure is low because the filters are blocking up the water will just keep running to the drain down the black tube here okay now as you can see the black tube is running because the tanks filling up and as soon as I turn the tank off the automatic shutoff valve has a piston in here and it knows then not to make water anymore not to produce water and fill the tank so it will shut itself off and the piston will shut down and it will stop the water going through and the whole process comes to a halt so you'll see now pressure gauge is at zero and the drain has stopped. The water filter tap itself obviously as it's connected to the same exactly the same connection as the tap as soon as you open it you can probably hear that system kicking back in again and again you can see the pressure gauge reading now, as you can see this is a hundred gallon per day member that we put in our systems so the waste ratio to pure water ratio is about the same some systems will put a lot more water to waste than this one and this is the reason why we have a holding tank because you wouldn't want to be standing with a jug of water trying to fill up at that flow rate it's not very good but as soon as we turn the tank on the flow rate becomes a lot stronger just what you want to fill a jug of water up and then the tank off so just in summary the water comes in through the sediment filter through the carbon filter, up into the automatic shutoff valve, out of the shutoff valve through the membrane, and then it goes two places. It goes to waste, and it also goes to the tank. And the tank itself completely fills with water. The shutoff valve stops the whole process, and you'll not have any water going to drain at all. With the shutoff valve, check valve and the tank, there's a lot of things can go wrong. To make it easy for you, we have a troubleshooting guide at our website, clearchoicewaterfilters.com.au or you can send us an email or if you're in Australia, call us 1300 001 752 and someone will be glad to help you if any problems that you may have with the reverse osmosis systems.